In your lecture, you mentioned different definitions of institutions and how different scholars take varying stands on this. So why is it hard to reach a consensus on the meaning of institutions? Good question. Um, there is no consensus. And I think the reason for the lack of consensus is that the definitions have been what I called in the lecture stipulative definitions. They don't sufficiently refer to ordinary language, to the practice and experience of practitioners and their understandings and their outlooks about, in this case, international politics and the institutional structure of international politics. So the debate within the academic literature has been highly abstract. Uh, various theories have put forward their own definition based on the definitions of others that they felt is uh, weak or has shortcomings uh, in some way or another. I think a better approach uh, would be to try and uh, construct our understanding and our definitions of in institutions from data of how practitioners, diplomats, statesmen, statespeople understand uh, institutions, how they understand what are the differences between primary institutions and secondary institutions? Uh, essentially, a primary, a primary institution uh, is an evolved practice uh, or set of ideas and beliefed, beliefs, a recognized practice, a durable practice. They're deeper or more fundamental than secondary institutions. Secondary institutions are defined by Bazan and others like Robert Keohane um, as international organisations, these concrete bodies with offices, uh, with staff, with budgets, uh, with uh, decision-making uh, bodies such as the United Nations uh, or NATO uh, or the IMF or ASEAN or the African Union. Um, so they're international organizations. According to some definitions, they're regimes. Now, the extent to which a regime differs from a primary institution is debatable. But one of the things that Bazan and others have tried to point to uh, is that a regime is something more specific. It focuses on a particular issue area, uh, such as the environment or pollution or out of sp outer space, or the Ant Antarct or Antarctic. So it might be a set of ideas and practices that have evolved over time, and they have become durable, but they relate to a specific issue area in world politics, rather than, rather than something more general. Finally, how would you suggest that English school move forward from its current conceptual dead end? When I first wrote this paper, I did rather precipitously come to the conclusion that primary institutions were a conceptual dead end. I've subsequently changed my mind on this. Uh, it might be a dead end, it might not. Uh, and what I tried to do in the lecture is show how we may go about systematically discovering whether it is or is not a dead end. Uh, and what I propose in broad terms is Chicago, uh, actually not so broad terms, quite specific terms, Chicago School Grounded Theory uh, as an approach that has a lot of common ground with the English school, uh, as it's been traditionally conceived, that could be uh, adopted. Uh, it's essentially a qualitative methodology that involves gathering and analyzing data uh, and building theory out uh, of the data involves a, a set uh, of research 
and analytical uh, steps. Um, it would involve interviews, surveys, questionnaires, the analysis of extant texts. Uh, from the particular social world we're exploring, which is the social world of states and diplomacy and, uh, and, uh, and states people. And from that, I think we will, uh, at some point, uh, it will involve a lot of work. Um, at some point, we will have a better idea as to whether the concept of primary institutions is indeed as Bazan and Holstein uh, and others have said, a very valuable concept. Professor Lesson, thank you very much.